One of the biggest problems that ChatGPT have currently, it's capped out in terms of data and information to January 2022, which is kind of problem for us if you wanted to get the information quick and fast and it's updated also. The best solution for that problem is a method called RAG. Okay, what is RAG? Retrieval Augmented Generation. This is one of the best methods that we can build a chatbot that have unlimited knowledge and access to any kind of custom knowledge base that you want. It could be a PDF, a Notion, a documentation, a coding base, or the web, which what we're going to do today. Building a full stack RAG chatbot with access to the internet using language change GS, NegaGS, and SobaPace, and also OpenAI APIs. If we ask ChatGPT, who is the new owner of Twitter? It will tell us as the new list update of January 2022, Jack Dorsey with the CEO of Twitter, as far as it is known, basically. But the rag we have created today will tell you the new owner of Twitter is Elon Musk. So it's quite like very powerful. It can beat ChatGPT in terms of knowledge. Just giving it access to the internet, do no wonder. To build our own unlimited knowledge, ChatGPT or GBT, we have to understand what kind of two ways that we can go in terms of training it. The first one is fine tuning, which taking the base model of the server model that we have and train it on the data that we want. And the second one is what we are doing today. And anyone can do it. Actually, it's very easy. Is giving it a custom knowledge base. This custom knowledge base can be an, a PDF, an ocean or an ABI, a documentation or a code or in today is a, a articles from the internet. The first thing that we start with is the custom knowledge base. It, we take this knowledge base, split it to chunks, cut it to pieces, smaller pieces, then pass it to embeddings. And embeddings is technically give it to the ABI of OpenAI or any other model that can create embeddings and turn it to a bunch of numbers. For each word, it have a number value. And put this all this number inside the database called vector database. The vector database is not like a like regular database that we know that store text and numbers. This is dedicated only for the embedding kind of storing. And the best thing about it that we can use it to do something called a similarity vector search. It basically, when we do a search or ask our basically GBT, it go back to the database that we have, give us the best results that you found similarity to, and turn it back to our model. We might, we can rephrase it or make it better, then give it, give the user the final response. This is basically how the rag work. And it's very simple. And I found four different ways that you can implement it using Lama, Lama index, LangGS, LangChain Python, and using BindCon. So I'm um, today I'm sticking with the JavaScript. Start with building the database, which is the most important thing. There is a wonderful database that didn't had the chance to use. It's called SuperBase. All what you need for a de from database, if you're building an AI app, go ahead and make an account and access it and go to the dashboard. The first time that we will access the dashboard, you will not find this. You will just find empty here and all you have to do is create a new project. This new project, you have to call it whatever what you want. We can call it overpowered GPT and we can have a password for it. Make it closer, closer to you is a better. I bought mine in Frankfurt. Okay, when we create a new project, what we want is to copy the public and on public key, this one, and the service key, this one, and the URL. Right now we can actually create a table. What, how we can create a table? We go to table editor and here we can click a new table and call yours, whatever what you want. I call mine chat history. history. Remove the low level security because this is gonna make it the authentication and here enable real time for subscription and add one more column we go we're gonna call it payload you can call it whatever what you want but you have to change it in the logic make it a json and hit save after it's done it will end up with something like this and an empty table with three columns inside it what superbase gonna do for us in this project is basically handling the, the notification part or updating the front end for us. It's going to create this kind of channel and we may store on it anything inside the back end. The front end will be seeing this update and keep giving us the new information that is coming 
from the back end. After we're done with the database right now, we head to SERP API, the Google search API. We're going to need some sort of API. Honestly, it doesn't matter as long as you know how to handle it. Go to your SERP API and hit and hit for the API key and then copy the API key. Here, we are going to put all our ENV variable. The OpenAI key, of course, for using the chat GPT, super base URL that I told about, the public one, the public key, and the private key, and the super base ABI key, the syrup ABI ABI key for the search engine ABI. And finally, I want you to put the name of the table that we created inside uh, the super base database. I'm gonna leave you the code for the entire project for free so you can go ahead and grab it. I have here the package JSON that I am using language, the language change is the first four icons, Superbase, Chiro for handling the HTML and turn it to text.env. Next.js, of course, this entire project is running on Next.js. 14, the last version, and Remarkable GMF and React Markdown. These two are for using for rendering the, the coming response from ChatGPT, having the Sarah BBI and unique user uh, unique user ID. Let's take a look at our folder. We have a style, just one file inside it, a couple of lines. It's not important. Then the main project inside folder called CRC, which is our source. Inside app is the pages that we have and the ABI. I called mine a rag. Let's take a look at it. I'm starting with importing a couple of li a couple of libraries that I'm going to use that I have already created. One for the ABI, OpenAI, one for the logic, and one for super base database like the creation, deleting, this kind of crud uh, in uh, what's happening. The first thing that I'm doing is down here, creating an ABI in that we can talk to. And I take a message, and it basically invoked the search engine results, which is gonna invoke the entire logic that we're going to do. Here is how it starts. First thing, we tell OpenAI here in this file, rephrase on input. Basically, I give it the input that I send the message and tell it to write it better using GBT 3.5 Turbo. I'm telling it here, this is my message. I want to take it, make it better, and return it to me. And then when it returned it to me, I take this message, I send it to the Syrup ABI ABI and tell it use the Google uh, search engine. And this is what I'm searching for. And it's when it's back, I get the result. And then I do normalization for the data. Basically what I'm normalizing, I'm just only taking the link and the title. Then go to each and every link that we fetch, call this link, and extract the entire HTML and filter it and take only the text in this only this function, fetch and handle here. This is our main logic over here. Fetch and the handle, what it do, it take a list and a prompt, which is a message. And here I tell it, uh, wait for all the links that you have calling until it's done and they return me the results. What I'm doing is basically for each article link, I go and I fetch it, get the response, extract the main content of it, which is here using the Shiro. I'm removing all the HTML element, I'm getting only the text. Then after that, I start splitting using the text splitter from LangChain.js. Here it split the text to a 400 chunk size. You can put it less or more, but I found 400 is very good for me. I am then using the split text to store it in the memory vector store, which is basically the available memory store for us in, in case, in, in this case is my PC, using the embeddings of OpenAI. Then getting this vector store and do similarity search on it. Like as I explained it, it's basically the vector database that we have in, in our memory. Look to the text, do the embedding for it, and basically see the most similar number close to each other and return for us the fairest results. I keep it uh, and save it inside an array called texts. If after this done, if I found the count of the result equal or uh, bigger than four, I return this results to our main function here use this result and pass it to another uh, function which will handle the answering our question. It's called the second stage. I know it's a stupid name, but like what it do is 
The first one, the handle GBT result. The handle GBT result, the input that we give it, uh, in, in our case, is basically tell it here our uh, results that we get from the vector database result. When the stream, I'm using here the OpenAI stream method, and the stream, when it's come back, I loop over it, each part of it, and I create here and a response a record row, basically a row for uh, for the table. And I save this row ID with me, and I keep update the database every time the stream come with new information. Every time that something happen inside our database, it changes, it give me also the change in the front end. So it's have this kind of relation like Firebase. When the handle GBT result is done, I invoke another function called follow-up. The follow-up function is give me more questions that I can ask based on the answer that I have. And after the follow-up function is done, I send it also to the super base so I can see it in the front end. And this is done. Basically, this is like the last of the thing that we're doing in our um, function. This is the last function that is invoke. And finally, we send the results to JSON response. Here, after the phrase happening, uh, what is the module language? Like I'm asking something that is the ChatGPT doesn't know. So I rephrase it and go back to the Sierra BBI and it give me this kind of bunch of links that I found. Then I extract it and I, the information from it, like the base content here, and the metadata is basically the links for each link. And here I'm saving it like in, and here I'm saving it inside the super base and generating the follow-up follow for the a bunch of answers that I have. So let's check our front end. Here, this is our, our app is working. Here, when we got the information that we wanted from the back end, it sent it to Superbase. In the Superbase subscription in our front end, got handled uh, handle the information displaying for us here. We have here different component for different situation, like one for header, one for content rendering, one for markdown, one for source link, each one here is corresponding to a type inside the payload. If you noticed here, when we saving here the superbase record, we're creating a type inside the payload called message creation and the same name for the component. In the front end, when we go here, we are listening to the table when it's get updated. Every time there is an insert, we fetch it and based on the type of this kind of fetch, we update the front end. Look into the, our front end here for this example. This is a headers. The payload had a type headers and inside it we put the name answers. Here, this is with a markdown. So when the payload came back with the type markdown, we had to render this kind of component. So it's kind of the component render based on the data that's coming back from the payload of the backend. Okay, how this is happening. Here I have a function called message handler. This message handler is basically a map for all the component that I have. And we pass to it to sync the message and the send message function. And it, we are using it here. When we have a message history, it's not empty. We render this function and we pass it to the message, basically the payload and the mess send the message function and it handled the rest. The send the message function for us sending a message to the back end, the ABI rag, post ABI that we have. And here in the use effect, the function that we look to to the first, what it does is basically listen to the chat history table that we have. And every time it get updated, it basically invoke this handle insert and this handle insert update the state of our react function like the message history. And this message history also gets it here first time to open the page. The super is also go to this, the table chat history and ball everything and put it to this message history. Here I'm using the react markdown for the markdown. This is gonna handle the turning the HTML that we have into uh, actual text that we can see like here in the front end. Like all this HTML have been rendered by the markdown and display like this is kind of like what chat gpt do but when the more questions type come in payload we display it in the follow-up related questions 
component that we have here. Speaking of knowledge base, you can have right now a template called Alima. Alima is a powerful template that can upload and talk to any PDF that you have. Not only that, that would also show you the source of the PDF, where it came from, and which page it have. You can this, you can buy this template right now for its half of its price. Link in description. Before I ended, I have created this video based on a request that I got in a comment. Someone asked how I can ask a large language model based on the new knowledge that I have. It have been a few weeks ago that I got this question and I didn't fully had the time to sit down and study it and build something like this. But right now I got the time and I got uh, and I got it out. So if you have any questions that you want, please ask me in a comment or reach me on LinkedIn. Feel free to ask me anything and I'm gonna do my best to answer you. With that, thank you for watching. Please subscribe and hit the like and notification button and see you in the next video.